part of the idea of it is being adaptable. And to be adaptable, you'll be able to change things in, in, in a moment or last minute. And that's kind of part of the definition of improvising. It's, and so I sort of, my really more broad definition of it is, would be something like in the, using the practice of music and sound to sort of cultivate a series of, uh, a, a sort of set of skills, uh, sort of survival mechanisms, so that you can put yourself in kind of complicated or unusual situations that you're not familiar with and then see how those skills or those things that you've learned help you navigate this new place. So that's that's always the same. I think what, what changes is that certain settings are really familiar and certain ones aren't. So like when I play solo, I'm doing it long enough. I was thinking about this the other day that super quickly in like my uh, life as a solo performer, I maybe within two years, I already had that feeling of, oh, fuck, I've already done this a million times. I need to figure some new stuff out. What am I, I'm either gonna stop this forever or try to find some new ways to make this unfamiliar to me so I can continue that sense of stay in that Garden of Eden of, of discovery and finding new things. And the paradox is that in order to stay in that place, you actually have to prepare more so that you can push yourself into, push yourself into some places that you, didn't, that you wouldn't have found otherwise. So, the preparation maybe for the different situations is, is that can change but the general concept is the same i think i don't forget where this phrase comes from the idea of like prisons that we choose to live in so after after doing after being an improviser for even a small amount of time you, you're building you're already laying like the edgar Allan Poe story you're already building the wall your own you're burying yourself alive in a way and so i think the way the way out of that is to um constantly rearrange the, the bricks, you know, and constantly expand the walls so that you don't feel like a prisoner of your own imagination, that actually it's, it's aiding you in, in, in moving out. And something I've started to realize is that when you, you, know, when you see really experienced improvisers or people, um, really super advanced artists in any discipline, you see them doing weird things that nobody likes, because it happens a lot. It's like, man, this guy's, he used to do this really cool stuff and now he's 70, he's doing blah, blah, blah. I think a lot of that has to do with, in that person's mind, they're just trying to keep themselves interested, however they can. It doesn't really matter what people think of it. And so it's very, very personal. You can never really know what's going on in somebody's mind. And also the, the changes from the performer side, or from the artist side, they could be big in our minds, but for the listener, they might not even notice them. So all that matters is for the sort of psychological survival of the improviser is this feeling that you're expanding, that you're, that you're moving forward or you're moving in some direction.
Uh, I guess I've learned more about it from playing with live electronics, where there's actual real delays happening that are that are changing all the time, and you're you're sort of interacting with it. That taught me a little bit more about how to play these spaces than just the gigs and the spaces. So once I started to think of the reverb and the echo and the church as a kind of delay, almost like a processing effect, that helped me understand more how. Because if I was playing with Sam Pluter and he had some crazy delay on me, I wouldn't just I would adapt to it. That's that's what I do because we're a duo. So it's almost like um, this is cliche in a way, in a you know, in a, in a way that you're you're playing a duet with this this space, but in the case of a church or a big reverberant room, you can you can do things that um, you know you can send something. You can send yourself sort of into the 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 past and then add something on top of it and create these these layers. That's what's interesting about it. It's not, for me, that's what's interesting about it for me is to create like a kind of counterpoint. It's not so much, there's some, some sometimes, some one way of dealing with it would be just to explore the silence, which is actually just the echo. That's, that's another way to look at it, right? But uh, I think every gig with, in a space like that, you have to kind of, that's why sound checks in a place like that are important. You don't want to be figuring it out like in the first five seconds of, what you can get away with and what you can't. Um, so every room just tells you sort of what it needs or what it won't allow for a gig. Metamorphosis and the idea of things having multi, uh, like a multi-dimensional aspect is a really important part of how I engage with art, just period. I like stuff that's, that's like that, that has all these different entry points that isn't, maybe doesn't feel finished or has a lot of, uh, not necessarily tension, but a lot of a lot of voices. You can approach it from a million different ways and never really figure it out. I like music like that. So I think that's just kind of as a composer, as a person, even forget about me writing anything. As a as a composer who composes with a trumpet, that's just kind of my vibe that I like. So I think I just it's a natural inclination to create the type of art that I would like to experience if I was on the other end, you know? Also, as a, to get back to the very first question, like being an improviser means being adaptable and malleable. And I, 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 my goal in life is, I, you know, I really want to, one of my goals is to, I want to be able to play music with anybody that's willing to play music with me, no matter what the instrument they play or what level they're at or whatever. So that requires a lot of different tools. It requires you to be able to um, shapeshift. Um, and so I, I work a lot on that. Just, always being able to turn X into Y, <laughs> if necessary.